All right, welcome back to Buddha Builds, everyone. Today we're going to be going over the welder that helped start my YouTube channel. It is the 40 Easy Weld FCI. It's strictly a flux core welder. It uses a 030 and 035 uh, welding wire. Um, very easy to use. It's strictly a 110 volt welder, so you can plug it into any any household out outlet, pretty much. I think this is one of the best welders for beginners. One because of the price. It's just a hair over 200 bucks which is pretty affordable for most people. And uh, really the opportunities are almost limitless for it too. Um, the weld specs are similar to the more of a, the higher end flux core welder machines, but this you just get a much better price for it. That's, that's why I originally went with it. Out of the box you get about a six foot ex extension cord for your, your MIG gun. It's eight foot lead and then your ground clamp right here. That's also uh, has eight feet. Setting it up is almost like every MIG welder. You open up the hatch, put your wire here. I don't know what happened there. Got a little bird's nest. I'll have to fix that. I'll fix it later. Anyways, under here you have your, uh, there's a little roller right there. One side has a groove for a 030 and the other, flip it around for 035 wire. And then you can run either one of those. Up here we have the, uh, the setup chart shows you the voltage, wire speed for each thickness. Your display, there's, it's nothing fancy because it is just a $200 welder. It just, anal, not analog, it just shows a, shows a dial 1 to 10 for your voltage, 1 to 10 for your wire speed. Nothing fancy on the front. Then lastly on the back you have your power on and off. It's a pretty basic machine but it gets the job done for sure. Uh, sometime soon I'm hoping to convert the 220 in my garage, but until then I'll be using this machine. So even though this is a 110 flux core welder, don't let that put you off from actually trying to put uh, take on some larger projects. Because with this welder I've made bumpers, I've made skid plates, I've made subframes for motorcycles, and a bunch of other just smaller stuff. But you have to know the limitations of a 110 volt welder. It doesn't have enough amperage to actually burn into like a like roll cage material. I wouldn't trust it for that or welding on like a like control arms or any sort of axle trusses that you would need a 220 volt welder just for more amperage more heat into the metal but for other projects that are just bolt-on stuff i say go ahead with this welder it'd be perfect the most recent project i made with this welder was my front skid plate i made it out of eighth inch uh eight inch steel lots of welding on this for all the ribs and the uh all the internal supports. And then the biggest project I made with this welder was my rear bumper. It's made out of 3 16 on top, welded to uh, 120 wall uh, tubing. That welder had no problem welding right into this stuff. Um, tying it into the frame, it is a quarter inch uh, flat stock. And that had no problem either. So you definitely can take on some pretty good projects with this welder. One of my earlier projects too was this, uh, the bed stiffener. That also is also a uh, 3 16 The welds aren't as good because they were one of my first ones, but it holds. I might make a new, uh, new set for them too, with a different style. Maybe you'll see a video of that coming up. All right, now under the penetration test, we'll see how good this thing welds. Uh, for our wire, we are using 0 .035 wire, the, uh, the Lincoln, flux core wire. We're going to use that for all three of them just to keep everything as similar as we can. Before we get to the penetration test, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And now let's get into it. So the thickness of metal we'll be testing this welder on are, we'll be starting with the 1 8 inch, we'll move up to the 3 16 and then we'll finish on the quarter inch. I chose those three thicknesses because I figured it'd give you a good real world example of what this welder can do. So now I'll just cut some strips, make some coupons, and weld them up. So I'll be welding each of these in the T-joint, laying a nice weld right between the uh, the two. Then we'll slice it in half, like polish it up, and then uh, we'll be using this stuff because I read online that you can cut and etch your welds with this. So we'll give this a go. So first off, we're starting with the, the quarter inch. Now for the 3 16 And finally, the one eighth. So 
So here are the welds. There's still a bunch of slag on top. Hopefully that's showing up clearly. But the method I used, I pulled it, waited till the puddle caught up, then pulled it a little more, waited till the puddle caught up, and just did that all the way down. I did the same for all three of these just so I could keep it as, as similar as I can. So here we have all the pieces cut in half. I used this uh, the flap disc to polish it up. Then I did a little dab of this stuff on there. And I'm hoping you'd be able to see where the, uh, the etching is. Here, this on the quarter inch, penetration goes into about right there. And on the bottom toe. So quarter inch, it bites into about, I'd say about 10% of the material. 16th or the six three sixteenths shows up pretty good So that's about 10% into the material there And then in there I think the three sixteenths could use a little more heat just to bite in a little more and then the one eighth The one eighth looks pretty good. It has about 20% uh, It goes into about 25% of the uh, material So the one eighth that looks pretty good 3 sixteenths, it could use a little more uh, heat than quarter inch. Quarter inch looks pretty good too. That is pushing the limits of this welder though. All right, before I wrap up this video, I just want to say I'm not a certified welder. I learned everything just doing in my garage. I learned it by just trial and error pretty much. So the penetration test, there could have been some error in me. I could have gone too fast or wrong technique, something like that. But uh, I, I hope this gives some sort of a rough general idea of uh, what this welder can do and what types of projects you can do with it. And uh, as always, subscribe if you liked it. Stay tuned for more videos. And then I'll, I'll link this welder in my description. So look for that. All right, catch you guys on the next video.